Hello, Michael Bull here with America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We are in Nashville. We're at Realtors Land Institute Annual Land Conference. And we have Edsel Charles with us. He's with Market Graphics, and he just did a presentation on the economic impact on residential land values. And Edsel, I appreciate you joining us. And I think one of the things that our audience is curious about is how long are these good times going to last? It seems like it's been, it's been great for a long time. It's a little bit hard to predict when you got the current political situation, but uh, are, we are in, uh, predicting uh, that May of 2020, it's awfully accurate, <laughs> we're going to see a modest downturn. Let me go back a little bit on that thought. We um, uh, have a forecast that was made May 14, 2000, that accurately called the downturn last time six years in advance without ever changing the report, called the bottom of the recession accurately to the month nine years in advance. So our stuff is a little bit different. And um, what we're now looking at May of 2020 as a modest downturn, we're thinking that between May of 2020 and the end of the year, we're gonna be up about 5%, and in 2021, 5%. And we're thinking in 2022, that we'll be off 4%, bottoming in the very early first part of uh, 23, off a total of 14%, which is very, very minor and very modest, nothing like the last downturn we had, which was a little bit insane. So we're seeing that it, a very modest downturn. We're actually thinking that in most of the cities we're in, uh, in 20 states, most of the cities we're in, that the bottom of the next recession will be relatively close to today's economy. So if you like today's market, you're gonna like the bottom of the next recession. <laughs> That's good. And if you're not familiar with market graphics, uh, they check the number of lots and home sales and lot sales and, uh, and really do it in a detailed way to kind of get an idea of the housing market moving forward. And uh, so where are we on lot supply? It seems that uh, when the recession, they said we had lots for, for decades to come and then it, that really low yes. lot supply, where are we? I was telling the last recession, I was telling bankers and clients, please don't panic and run and sell your stupid lots. <laughs> Just hang on to those things. Yeah. It's absolute insanity to try to do that because we were forecasting right after, just towards the bottom of the last recession, which may have nine, we were saying, please, what you got coming is a lot shortage. That's immense lot shortage. It's a crisis coming. Well, everybody thought we were a little bit nuts. Uh, so uh, where we're at right now, well, let me go back just a little bit more. If you go back a few years ago, I had three people that uh, were a large, one of the largest equity firms in the United States, and uh, without getting to names, uh, three of them, and they were after trying to say, well, how many lots are we gonna be short in the next uh, five years? And our research showed that the United States was gonna have to develop 4,640,000 lots over that time period over the next Four years. Well, you would think that between then and now that we would have firmed that up and th get a, more developers and more money and, 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 and cities be willing to zone, zone better. We've actually gone backwards. Instead of 4,640,000, we're now over 4,900,000 lots that have to be developed between now and the end of 22. Wow. It's absolute insanity. And it's pushed up lot prices. Many cities, like Nashville, for instance, to give an example here, uh, they're running at about a year and a quarter supply. You need two and a half year supply of lots to have an adequate supply. I don't have anywhere two and a half years. Wow. And so we have a, the question is, where, will we get better? Will it get better in the, into the next go round after the little modest downturn that's coming? And the answer is, I think the most you're gonna see is a flattening of, of uh, land prices. It's not gonna go down. And then it's going to be up all the way into 28, 29, we believe. I think we got a real problem with a shortage of lots, and it's not going to get better. And I think it's going to force land prices up. It's a real problem. So why, <clears throat> excuse me, why do we not have enough lot supply? Is it because there's less builders? A lot of these smaller residential builders kind of went out in the downturn, or is it the lenders that uh, aren't doing the loans, or is it the underlying land prices? What's the cost? Yes, it's all of that. But, but I think you really could narrow down about three things. A lot of the developers got hurt. 
I don't believe you have the development capacity. I just don't think so. We don't have enough developers that have stayed to come back that today have the courage to develop as much as they used to. We don't have the development capacity. Second thing is, I think that we are surely short of money to pull that off. <clears throat> the lenders are still strained to get the government rules are straining them. And I think the third thing is the big one. You don't have cities willing to zone at a density per acre adequate enough to make the deals work. So you have those three things, not enough capacity, not enough money, and, and then not a willingness of cities to help. Uh, one of the big problems out of that is that I'm convinced that we are a, a lot of discrimination going on by governments against the elderly hmm. because they raise the size of the lots, they raise more rules, more regulations, and, and it costs you more for the lots, which pushes up the home price, and it's hard for the elderly to move down and buy a new home. Well, you know, it, if they won't give the density, uh, it seems like most, most, more, most markets are concerned about affordable housing. Yes. Well, more density is part of the answer, isn't part it? Part of the answer. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe a few. I have some cities, listen to this, you're not going to believe this. I have some cities that want to pick the color to brick on buildings. Hmm. Well, how stupid is that? Yeah. I mean, give me a break. So we have way too much of that foolishness that goes on. And, uh, and I watch, and, and I know this is not what you're asking, but sometimes our, some of our planning commissions now are being infiltrated by the, by the millennials. Mm -hmm. And they, th their interest is more bike paths. Well, I appreciate that, but it's hard to live on a bike path. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to have both. You've got to have a balance. You've got to balance. You gotta have the bike path, yeah. but you've got to have places to live. Yeah. You've got to have lots. Yeah. Anyway. Well, let's talk about interest rates because I think that's on the mind of most people that yes. rates are going to rise. What do you expect moving forward for rates? And then where do we get to a rate problem? Well, here, oh, that's, that's, I'm glad you asked the question. Let me tell you what, about that. If you go back all the way to 1971, from 71 all the way to September of 2000, the interest rate at which would shut the housing market or slow the housing market back was eight and eight percent for 30 year mortgages. Mm -hmm. You had to be 8% or less. But in September of 2000 to September of 2002, that changed in the public's mind. We did a seven year study to find out what the public would, needed to have in order to buy new homes. And we found that it, it, when you got to six and a quarter percent, it would start to shut the housing market down. So you have to be six and an eight percent or less. Well, you say, well, gee, we're at four and three eighths today, four and a half, four and a quarter and you're gonna shut down a six and a quarter, oh great, we got two percentage points. That's not, that's not quite true because the interest rate you see right now is a lie. It's not true. The 30-year mortgage rate is, is make-believe. The way you find out the real 30-year mortgage rate is take the federal funds rate, ten, a treasure, I'm sorry, 10-year treasuries, and add 2.1 to 2.4 to it, and that'll give you the 30, real 30-year rate all the way back for 30, 40 years. Still some foolishness going on in financial markets. What's going to happen now that we've made all these changes? The rate's going to go back up. The real spread is between the real rate, which is about four and seven eighths to five right today, all the way to that six and a quarter shutdown rate. So we got about one and a quarter percent. I don't think you're going to see us get to six and a quarter to touch that until May of 2020. Okay. And you got that little bump. And it, it'll come down, it's going to scare everybody to death, and they're going to try to stay a little bit underneath that. Well, and that's in part why you're suggesting that's when it's going to slow down, right? In 2020. I, yeah, I really believe that. Yeah. All right. Well, Edsel, thanks for joining us here and, you're uh, welcome. and, and being here and speaking at the yeah. event. That's great. Good seeing you. Thank you.